All right, so here is the second way and most likely the best way to keep your AVR cool. Now remember that between 80, 84 degrees is gonna be your optimum temperature. It, you know, you still need heat, um, but you don't need excessive heat. So this is um, a device um, that basically takes fans and cools it down. Instead of having individual or a whole bunch of individual fans, this puts it as one um, unit. Now, this is a, a little bit more expensive than doing it by two fans, which is the two fans uh, method with the um, integrated interface and the controller. And the stand is still going to be somewhere around 60, 70 bucks, depending on when you maybe 80 bucks, depending on when you watch it. Um, but this one, the bad thing about, the only thing I don't like about the individual fans, there's a lot of wires and a lot of electrical wires attract dust. Don't like dust. You could probably hear in some of my videos, uh, uh, I, I, I suffer from allergies and sinuses really, really bad. So uh, this is made by AC Infinity. They make three different models um, to cool your component. And let's flip it over so you can see what it does. All right. <clears throat> the one cool thing about this is that if you notice when you go to a a AC Infinity's website, they're always using a Marantz uh, receiver. So if you have a Denon or a Marantz, you can see it's going to fit uh, flawlessly, almost perfectly on your receiver. Um, so a couple things here. Oops, let me move this over. Uh, you have smart controls. We'll go over that. Um, silent cooling. I think this model is either 21 or 24 decibels, so it's very, very uh, uh, quiet. Um, of course, it has the three fans. Uh, very premium build, and this is actually pretty heavy um, for for what this what this actually does. Uh, it does have expansion ports. We'll pull this out. Actually, no. Here's the information right here. This is the Aircom T8 rear exhaust, triple 120 uh, millimeter blowers. Airflow is 160 CFM, 21 uh, decibels. Very, very quiet. Well, only at nine and a half watts. And the dimensions are 17 inches wide, one and a half uh, inches tall, and 13 and a half dimensions. Uh, I'm sorry, 13 and a half inches uh, deep. And it weighs almost seven pounds. So what you get with this, is your fan, your power adapter, and your manual. So let's go ahead and open this up and look at this bad boy. Oops. All right, so there's our manual right there. Here is the wall wart. Let's take the foam off. And I'll take the foam off. Sorry, I'm using my uh, Grand Twins uh, picnic table that they eat off of um, as a display deck. So here we go. So here's the unit. I like the brushed. Um, this is a rear port exhaust. And then here are the fans. Right. Nice uh, feet to it as well, too. So here are the fans. Now... You have a couple different models here. Um, of course, you have the rear uh, exhaust ports. You have the top exhaust ports. And then they do make one that has front exhaust ports for right here. Now, <clears throat> they have three different models to fit pretty much everybody's needs. But if you have a display unit like mine, um, there's a couple options you can use. So um, the top port where the fans, the bottom, and then there's two exhaust, three exhaust ports here. Here's the uh, picture. Then that's gonna move the most air, right? Cause it's just gonna go from there to there. All right. So the top port, the one, two, three, is gonna move the most air and be the most efficient cooling. Now, the only problem with that is, is <clears throat> so say you're going to see that with mine, one and a half inches. If you have another one and a half inches, that means all that air is going to hit the bottom 
of the next shelf and have to be spread out all over the place. So if you have an enclosed unit, you may not want this one. You may not want the top one. If you have an enclosed unit, you might want this one, the rear port, or the one with the front port. Now, theoretically, the front port would be the best option for everybody because it's going to pull the air out and move it out the front. And obviously, you don't have anything in front of your receiver or your unit itself, so there's nothing to obstruct airflow. Although, that's going to be a lot more louder. Now, another option is the rear port. Right, look at all these ports here. Now, what this will do, it'll pull the air out, push it out the rear. And for the most part, that's what she said, uh, for the most part, this will be another effective way, but remember how much space do you have between your stand and the wall? Because again, once it pushes out, it's gonna hit that wall, it's gonna restrict airflow and spread it out, you know? So really, you have to look at what's gonna be your best option for your unit. I have an open um, TV stand, so really all three would have been the best, um, but I chose to go with the rear unit uh, because that's going to be the quietest because um, that's where the air is going to escape. That's where the sound is going to escape. Uh, remember, the front is probably going to be the most effective way just because there's nothing uh, restricting airflow, but that's going to be the loudest. Uh, what's going to move the most air would be your top port. Uh, but again, how much space do you have in between your next shelf? You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, well, let's see it now. Let's go and put this on my uh, entertainment center. Okay, right now I have it set on. If I were... So there's high speed. And you can hear how loud that is. Okay. Now, I don't have anything on in the TV. So let's go back here. The sitting view. Yeah. I mean, that's loud, but you got to figure there's nothing else on. So you might hear my fish tank in the background. So, but we're not always going to have it on high, right? <clears throat> so, if you want to, here is the up and down for the fan. All right? So, hit menu. There's off. I can set an alarm. So I'm gonna set the alarm for 100, okay? So 100 degrees, alarm's gonna go off. Now I can set it to auto to kick on at say 80 degrees. I could do smart, and it kicks on at 80. I can do it to 90 if I wanted to. Let's say it there. And now it's on, but it's only on one fan. just now now there we go eco the display is off with you might want to hit this if you're watching a movie because yeah it might be a little too bright I think though if you hit it and hold it if I remember correctly you can change it to Celsius oh. but I'm in America so we do Fahrenheit here and there we go Right, so it's off. 
I, have, I can set the alarm to whatever I want it. I have the alarm set at 100 degrees. Um, although I'm in my basement, so theoretically, um, since basements are pretty much cooler, you know, than the upstairs, it should almost never get to 100 degrees, right? Um, I have it set for auto, which means it'll cut on at 90 degrees. Um, I think I'm going to keep mine at 85 degrees. Okay. And then the smart is set for 85 degrees and it's going to kick on. So, you know, the fans are going to kick on more and more with each temperature change. Okay. So right now you can see the ambient temperature out in my basement, 68 degrees, right? And remember that's the alarm temperature. That's the temperature it's going to be set at. Really easy to, uh, really easy to navigate. Nothing too har harsh about this. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to listen to some music. In case you're wondering, I do plug everything. I just can't find this one. I just don't like dust getting all up in there. So, um, also, this is a uh, AVR 2000, X2000. So, it's a little bit older. It's about 10-year-old model. Um, um, I haven't upgraded just because of the fact that, well, you know, my grand twins and my daughter live down here. So, I don't get to watch as many movies as I used to. Uh, only because they're three. Of course, obviously that will change. So let's change this to. Uh, oh, yeah. One of the cool things about this is, is I always have it set to zero uh, when it first turns on. That way I don't have to worry about it. Right. It's only so, for a little while, Grandma. It's coming through a Bowers and Wilkins. Um, but. Let's change it to, let's turn the CD player on. And let's turn it on. Let's open it up. And let's listen to some music here. Right. And open it up. Let's listen to battery. Yeah, I I always keep the plastic on till the last moment. It just keeps it looking a whole lot neat, neater. But the plastic does come with it. Oh, I can't do that until I turn on my shit, Modi. Modius. Yeah, that's it. All right, that's on. So I think it is this one. Yeah. So we're going to listen to some music. Yes, my grand twins really know how to ruin everything. And my whole room down here is nothing but grand. I have this box and those mattresses. It blocks all this from doing that. And then that keeps them from, you know, uh, damaging everything. So let's monitor this for a little while. So as you can see here, um, the temperature set at 80 degrees. The probe is at 80 degrees, so it's doing its job. Um, this unit is awesome. I love everything about it. The only thing I wish it had was an IR trigger. So that way it wouldn't stay on all the time. So if anyone from Infinity, uh, AC Infinity is watching, set it up, do the, your next version two with an IR trigger. So I could just tap that quarter inch IR trigger right into my Denon receiver. And then that way it'll turn on and off when I um, turn on my den receiver. But other than that, it is a awesome unit.